All right, good afternoon. We apologize for the delay. You know how it is when you use technology. There's always something fun to look forward to. Um, this is such an exciting event, and I'm, I'm happy to have you here. I'm Dr. Gina McAllister. I'm the Dean of the School of Education here at Chipola, and it's an honor for me to welcome you to the, two, to the 2023 Fall Pinning Ceremony. Um, we know that each person that is here today has played a very important role in the success of these graduates completing their goals. And this is such a wonderful milestone for them, and we thank you uh, for everything that you've done. So let's begin today's ceremony by offering a token of our gratitude. Let's first offer a round of applause to the friends and the family that have supported our graduates through this journey. And we also want to take a moment to acknowledge our college faculty and staff who have been so instrumental in preparing our students along the way uh, and to getting to them to where they are today. With several of them are joining us here on stage and some in the audience. But let's well thank them as well. <laughs> Graduates, we're so proud of you. Um, you have worked so hard and have persevered really through a lot of things to achieve this goal. Um, determination, flexibility, and strength, those are all skills that you developed along this pathway uh, to become an educator. And these skills are going to serve you well in your new journey as a teacher as you begin and, and as you start to excel in making a difference in the lives of so many students and young people and what their futures are going to look like. Uh, we feel blessed that you have chosen Chipola College as a place to pursue your education, and we're just really honored to have had the opportunity to play a small role in helping you achieve your goals. Let's spend a moment now, and I want you to direct your attention to the screen behind me. Uh, we're going to watch a short presentation of our graduates and including Included with the graduates' uh, pictures, you're going to see quotes that they have selected that express their thoughts about education in their new careers.
Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Jawan Clark, faculty member in the School of Education. Each year, we select graduates to share a special graduation message with their peers. It is my pleasure to introduce to you one of your fellow graduates, Virginia Milton Elementary Education, who has prepared a few words to share with you today. Virginia, if you would come up. Wow, it's bright up here. Okay, so we were just discussing how it has, was a little bit of a poor decision that they chose Michael and I as the two representatives of this graduate class, so I'm very sorry, you guys. When I was asked by Dr. McAllister to speak at graduation, my answer was yes, because I can never say no to her. But then I realized I said yes. And I am terrified of speaking in front of a lot of people, even though I do talk a lot. I texted her a few days ago, and I tried to back out. Well, she told me she would have to reprint everything, so I didn't back out. <laughs> so what better way to make a graduation speech for education than by asking my own students what I should say? So here's a very short summary of what my fourth grade students had to say. Hi. My name is Virginia Milton, and thanks to my class, I now know what to say. Thank you to Chipola College and to all my professors who have taught me the past four years. I'm grateful for having great teachers and friends. My heart is filled with joy. We are now teachers, so finally graduating will take some pressure off. Thank you to my family and friends for being there for me, and some inspirational advice as we take this new journey. You got this, and you are capable of doing hard things. Miss B's fourth grade class. Thank you to my sweet students for helping me write that, and I really hope you're being good for whoever is watching you right now. <laughs> These first two weeks of teaching on my own have been challenging and difficult in every way possible, but I turn to God and know that this degree, no matter how long it took us, through the trials and tribulations, we are right where we need to be. Becoming a teacher is a calling, whether we wanted to answer the phone or not. We were born and made for this. The last thing I'd like to say to my fellow classmates as we go our separate ways is a quote that keeps popping up. You cannot be all the things to all students, but sometimes, just sometimes, you will be the right teacher at the right time. You will be the exact teacher that one child needed more than anything. Thank you. It is also my pleasure to introduce another one of your fellow graduates, Michael Weeks, Elementary Education, as he comes forward to share a few encouraging words. Um, just for the record, I thought Dr. Kaiser made a great idea when she asked me to speak today. Um, how are y'all doing today? My name is Michael. Um, when Dr. McAllister asked me if I would like to speak at the pending, I think my response to her was, heck yeah, absolutely. Over the last two years, my, my classmates have learned that I don't mind talk, listening to myself talk. This program has been the most difficult thing that I have ever completed. I have spent a lot of time with my classroom, classmates in the computer lab just down the road. We have had plenty of interesting conversations over the last two years, and I think we have all embarrassed ourselves enough, enough to be prepared for anything a kid might throw at us. If I learned nothing else over the last two years, I have learned time management and how to deal with stress, but I did learn more than that for the record. But this speech isn't about me. It's about my class and the clear career we have chosen to pursue. I think we all know signing up that we probably won't, won't be millionaires one day, and I think we all know that we aren't choosing the easiest career path and that it won't always be sunshine and roses. We are choosing one of the most difficult, yet one of the most fulfilling careers in the world. We have the opportunity and responsibility to make a positive impact on a child's life every single day we clock into work. We have the opportunity to give a chance to the kid that doesn't have one. We have the privilege to give a child confidence when they have none. And we have the chance to be there for a student when it seems like no one else will. We are going to face many challenges in an ever-changing school system and world, 
bad behaviors, standards and criteria that seem to change every other year. Parents don't care. The list could go on. But with those challenges comes the opportunity to change the world for the better. It will not only be our job to teach students how to read, write, multiply, and divide, but to show them how to be kind and treat others the way they would like to be treated. Show them how to hold a door for others or to help their classmate when they spill their lunch tray. Having the chance to positively affect a child will outweigh any challenge we might face. During the rough days and sometimes weeks that will wear us down, we need to remember our why. Why do we want to become a teacher? God has blessed each and every one of us with the skills and passion to pursue this career, and I believe that we are all right where we are supposed to be and called to do this job. My new boss, Ms. Jessica Larkin, said something at the beginning of the school year that has stuck with me. We have the most important job in the world. If it were not for us, there would be no other jobs. We teach the scientists, the engineers, the firemen, the doctors, the policemen, the lawyers, and everything else. To me, that is a privilege that we should appreciate and not take for granted. I have been teaching in my classroom for a whole week and four days now, and I can attest that it is not the easiest job in the world, but it is one of the most fulfilling things that I have done. I hope we all have long and impact impactful careers that change the lives of many. With that being said, good luck and go change the world. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Casey Dogel, School of Education faculty member. We are so privileged to have Ms. Adriana Swearingen, the 2024 Florida Teacher of the Year, as our guest speaker today. Ms. Adriana Swearingen, a media specialist at Northside Elementary School in Bay County, was selected as the 2024 Florida Department of Education Teacher of the Year from nearly 185,000 Florida public school teachers. Ms. Swearingen will serve as the Krista McAuffey Ambassador of Education, elevate, ev excuse me, elevating and celebrating the teaching profession by promoting the contributions of Florida educators. While serving as an educator for the past seven years, Adriana has focused on developing her students into the next generation of leaders. She facilitates student-run morning broadcasts and pioneers the accelerated reader program, cultivating an environment of confidence in her students. When not in the classroom, she volunteers her time to the Northside Elementary Technology Club, Lego Club, and Yearbook Committee. Transitioning from a classroom teacher to a media specialist in 2021, Ms. Swearingen was a key factor in Northside Elementary's overall school grade increasing by 12 percentage points, English language arts learning gains rising 21 percentage points, and learning gains in ELA for the lowest quartile students growing a whopping 41 percentage points. Adriana holds a master's degree in educational leadership from the University of West Florida and a Bachelor of Science in Elementary Education from Florida State University. She is proud of her military childhood and loves how the exposure to different cultures, learning, and perspectives continues to positively impact her life, both personally and professionally. Adriana is a proud mom of two boys and wife of a Marine. I am thrilled to welcome the Florida Teacher of the Year from Bay County, Ms. Adriana Swearingen. Hello everyone, good afternoon. My name is Adriana Swearingen and I am the 2024 Florida Teacher of the Year. It is an absolute honor to be with the graduates today. Thank you Dr. McAllister for inviting me in Chipola College. As the 2024 Florida Teacher of the Year, I have the privilege of serving as the Krista McAuliffe Ambassador for Education to honor excellence in teaching and highlight the importance of our profession. As Florida's Teacher of the Year, I am proud to represent all of the amazing teachers across the state of Florida who dedicate their lives, standing as beacons of light within their schools, communities, lighting the way for students, colleagues, and families. Lighthouse serves as guides for sailors. They warn of impending dangers and offer reassurance. When bad weather strikes or seas become stormy, they stand strong to guide the way. And if you were to visit my school, Northside Elementary, you would see that our media center is perfectly placed directly in the center of our school building, serving as the epicenter for learning, but also as a place for gathering and community. Our media center 
serves as our school's lighthouse, providing books and knowledge to guide the way. Books have this beautiful ability to bring hope, foster resiliency, and ignite curiosity for those who are willing to open their pages. Words are powerful. Stories are powerful. Like Rays from a Lighthouse or Books in a Library, we have the privilege of helping students find those beeps of hope, resiliency, and curiosity, leading them to discover their potential. In fact, because of the unyielding light and steadfast dedication of Florida educators, we have already accomplished some amazing things across our state. Florida is ranked number one for education by the U.S. News and World Report. And during the 2022-23 school year, educators across the state implemented the first ever Nation's Progress Monitoring System for Accountability. The final results show that students made substantial growth throughout the year and student subgroups demonstrated significant improvements. I know in my own life, I have had many wonderful people stand as lighthouses along the way to shine me along mine. One steady beacon has always been my mom. She represents a steady guide in my life, the one who has continuously brought me back to that hope, resiliency, and curiosity that I sought at different turning points in my life. My mom has always had this incredible drive and sense of determination, and because of her, I have felt safe and hopeful. She believed in my dreams, giving me the courage to pursue my own journey. And while my mom brought all the dependability to our family, my dad's service in the Air Force brought all of the adventure. It was each new duty station that offered these unique opportunities of being immersed in diverse cultures and graining fresh perspectives into how others lived and learned in their lives. Yet, as life often plays out, along with these wonderful adventures also comes its hardships. In time, however, I grew accustomed to celebrating our family's special occasions with our neighbors and our fellow military families. We quickly became each other's family. As I look back now as an adult, I can clearly see that each of these amazing people fostered that sense of hope, resiliency, and curiosity throughout different points in my life, but each did so in their own unique way. So hope. Hope is this interesting little word and is a common theme found throughout children's literature. We can trace it as far back as Greek, in Greek mythology with the story of Pandora and her box, where she manages to capture hope inside to offset all the evils already set out into the world. And today we often use this little word hope without giving it much thought, yet not fully understanding its potential. Stories of hope, whether fictitious or biographical, can offer encouragement and somehow help us manage to keep going and to stay the course. Now let me share a story with you of another woman, not nearly as famous as Pandora, but who stood just as mightily as a beacon of hope in my own life. Her name is Mrs. Robin Mills, and in 2014, I served in her fourth grade classroom as a paraprofessional for a very short time. What first struck me was her unwavering passion for teaching. She was a pillar to her students, past, present, and even future. And she told me about a pen pal project that she had started years past with a private contractor in the Army named Nate Renew, who was stationed in Afghanistan. The letters first started out being addressed to the entire class, but quickly developed into adopting many pen pals, as he personally wrote each and every student in that class. And while Nate and his bomb sniffing dogs were in Afghanistan, the letters became his connection to home. However, five months later, she received gut-wrenching news. Nate had lost his life. Because her and her students had been a constant source of encouragement to him, she was personally invited to attend his funeral and was celebrated as the guest of honor. She described to me how his friends and family thanked her for being the beacon of hope in his life and in the lives of the soldiers stationed alongside him. You see, as he received each and one of those letters from those students, he would share them with his comrades and his family members. And as a result, multiple soldiers became personally invested in the students' lives, giving them hope for the future to hold on while they were away from home. Miss Mills became a beacon to many, and her impact resonated through the threads of Nate's life, the soldiers' lives, and to the lives of those students. She taught me how to be a beacon of hope by creating these opportunities for students to connect their learning and to, from their own lives, allowing people to see the positive impact that they can have around them. And since that first year as a prayer professional, I have seen teachers infuse a similar kind of hope into their students' lives and kindle a fire of change over and over again. 
and it was because of this experience I decided to join the ranks of these noble educators, but more on that adventure a little later. In A.A. A. Milne's beloved story of Winnie the Pooh, there is a particularly tender moment when a young boy named Christopher Robin encourages his friend Pooh Bear by reminding him, you are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. As educators, we often find ourselves serving as the Christopher Robin for our students, standing as these beacons of resiliency, providing encouragement, stability, and instilling perseverance to those in our care. Much like when Tigger and Piglet learn from these exciting adventures and challenges, we too foster resiliency in our students by encouraging them to grow, to overcome, and explore, and learn. Now let me share with you a more personal story that shines the light on the need of resiliency in our learning spaces and how standing as a beacon of resiliency can make all the difference. I remember being a fired up third year kindergarten teacher ready to make a difference. My co-teachers and I were on a mission to change the game in kindergarten with innovative teaching methods and departmentalizing the subjects together as a team. However, on October 10th, 2018, Hurricane Michael hit our commu community, leaving everything in chaos and uncertainty. Yeah. I'm sure that many, if not most of you, sitting here today can remember a time when the devastating effects of a major storm or hurricane has directly impacted your lives, the lives of the people around you. When you live through something as traumatic as a natural disaster, no matter your age, you never really forget it. Weeks later, Highland Park Elementary School was still reeling from the aftermath of the storm and was not quite ready to open its doors. It was well over a month before we finally did reopen. But during that time of transition, one thing was certain. My teaching partner and I wanted to remain focused on creating an environment that instilled resiliency for our little ones before academics could thrive. We had to stand strong as these beacons of resiliency and consistency through all of the instability now more than ever for our students, our family, and especially our community. During this challenging year, one of my students in particular, Jamie, was searching for light. She was naturally a shy filled girl, but it was only amplified post hurricane. I knew that I wanted to be the stronghold of resiliency for Jamie. On one of our first day back, the contractors began working on their roof. However, we were not informed of this ahead of time, so you can imagine our surprise when the banging and the thrashing started out of nowhere. Chaos immediately ensued, and you had little crying faces in every corner of my classroom. We had to work really hard to ground ourselves and talk out exactly what was happening around us, that we were resilient, that we have weathered this storm, and we will get through this together. This whole experience affected a little Jamie far more than the others. It wasn't easy for her, but throughout the year, whenever Jamie would get scared, we would repeat together, I am strong, I am brave, I am resilient, I got this. And with time and consistency, I began to see change, and then see more change. Slowly but surely, once J Jamie realized that she could face these challenges with resiliency, her scores shot up significantly. And I think this is a true power to the testament of resiliency, that providing this environment where students can face these challenges head on. Jamie continued to soar both academically and emotionally for the remainder of that school year, and all she needed was a little light to guide her, encourage, and foster resiliency for her to thrive. Some of my favorite teaching moments have been found in those unexpected twists and turns in my lesson, sparked by curiosity. In the classic novel by C.S. Lewis, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, the power of curiosity is beautifully illustrated as the story follows four siblings, Peter, Susan, Edmund, and Lucy, who are evacuated during World War II to live in the countryside with an old professor. And while exploring the professor's large, mysterious house, Lucy stumbles upon something. This must be a simply enormous wardrobe, thought Lucy, going still further in and pushing the folds of the coats aside to make room for her. Then she noticed that there was something crunching under her feet. I wonder, is that more mothballs, she thought, stooping down to fill it with her hands. But instead of feeling the hard, smooth wood of the floor of the wardrobe, she felt something soft and powdery and extremely cold. Just as Lucy's curiosity opened this portal into a magical realm, curiosity serves as a beacon in education today, shining the way to knowledge, understanding, and insight. 
This tale reminds us that learning is not only confined to textbooks. Learning first begins with curiosity, where questions lead to exploration, exploration leads to knowledge. From the wardrobes to our classrooms, learning is often the direct result of cultivating that curiosity in our learning spaces. What would have happened if Lucy had stopped investigating the wardrobe and stopped moving forward? The land of Narnia would have never been discovered, and Lucy's adventure, growth, and discovery would look entirely different, changing the story completely. So I encourage each of us to be those bright beacons of curiosity in our schools and for our students. To the future engineers sitting in your class, guide them to keep asking questions about how machines work. And to the future carpenter, ask them to find out why today's geometry lesson will help them build a more sturdier chair. Curiosity fuels learning regardless the direction your students may take them. So how have these three beacons, hope, resiliency, and curiosity worked in my life story to help me discover my potential and lead me to be an educator? Well, I have always felt this calling to be a lighthouse. I had these grand plans for my future. First, I was gonna graduate from the medical field, apply to become an officer in the Air Force, and soar the skies as a pilot. After all, the core values of the Air Force have been instilled in my heart and mind from a very early age. Integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all we do. Over the years, I had always thought about teaching as it seemed to be in my heart, but I questioned it. No one in my family was a teacher, and it wasn't a profession that my advisors, mentors, or even friends mentioned as an option. Yet, the more I dissected my aspirations, the clearer the picture became. It all pointed me back to education. But at the same time, I still felt conflicted. I wrongly believed that a military career was what was expected of me by my family. A teacher, I thought. This wave of anxiety washed over me as I contemplated how in the world I was going to tell my mom, my stronghold, that I wanted to pursue a future in education after these elaborate plans of joining the military. But she knew I was cut out for this. She knew I could be a lighthouse, shining the beacon of hope, resiliency, and curiosity for future generations. Not only my mom, but there have been so many people in my life along the way who have each shed a different light to expose a more of who I wanted to be as a person and a teacher. Becoming a teacher has indeed been a transformative journey. So what is your story? What unexpected twists and turns fill the pages of your life's tale that describe to get where you are today? As you continue on your own life journey, remember that you are lighting the way for your students along theirs. You don't know their final destination, but you can provide the light that guides them forward. So how will you shine brightly into the lives of your students? In what unique ways will you guide them towards a better future? Just as in my own life, it takes more than one person, one experience, or one intended direction to set a student on their course. But instead, it is a collection of stories from unforgettable people and experiences. You are the lighthouses of hope, resiliency, and curiosity beckoning your students towards the shores of their potential. And it takes all of us willing to share our light to help our Florida students shine. Together, we can turn these book of potential sorry, our pages of potential into a book of success for our students, chapter by chapter and story by story. Thank you guys and congratulations. Thank you so much, Ms. Swearingen, for those encouraging words. Those were words I think we all needed to hear today. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Dr. Mackenzie Johnson and I'm a faculty member in the School of Education. This pinning ceremony that we're here for today, it's one that we adopted from the field of nursing. It's a time-honored tradition and it dates back to the late 1800s. This ceremony is intended to be personal, a personally meaningful introduction into the brotherhood and the sisterhood of educators. The expectations of a professional educator are outlined in the Florida Department of Education Code of Ethics of the Education Profession. Please listen carefully as I read the code. The educator values the worth and dignity of every person, the pursuit of truth, devotion to excellence, acquisition of knowledge, and the nature of a democratic citizenship. 
Essential to the achievement of these standards are the freedom to learn and to teach and the guarantee of equal opportunity for all. The educator's primary professional concern will always be for the student and for the development of the student's potential. The educator will therefore strive for professional growth and will seek to exercise the best professional judgment and integrity. Aware of the importance of maintaining the respect and the confidence of one's colleagues, of students, of parents, and of other members of the community, the educator strives to achieve and sustain the highest degree of ethical conduct. The pen that you will be receiving today is a symbol of your commitment to the education profession and upholding the expectations within this code of ethics. Congratulations on your decision to become a professional educator. The graduates have prepared a message to share with their friends and family. Rebecca Mercer, president of the Future Educators Club and senior in the School of Education, will read the messages as the graduates receive their pins. As your name is called, please proceed to the stage. Carly Allen. There are not enough words in the world to adequately thank the people who have moved heaven and earth to get me here today. To my mentor teacher, Miss Davis, who without, I, who without I definitely would have drawn. To my brother who would tell me that no one cares and to work harder when I complained about school. To my sister who has spent countless hours babysitting while I was in class and only complained a little. To my parents for always pushing me to do my best and always believing in me. And last but certainly not least, to my boys for only complaining a little when mommy had to do homework and for giving me a reason to not give up. Thank you. In the wise words of my five-year-old, yay, you're done, mommy. <laughs> Brianna Brock. First and foremost, I want to thank God for blessing me with the opportunity to attend Chipola College. Without his love and provision in my life, I wouldn't be standing here today. I also want to thank my husband, Alex. He has selflessly supported me through every step of my educational journey. He has proofread essays, listened to all my wild practical experiences, and given me a shoulder to lean on when the stress caught up to me. His unending support has driven me to be the best version of myself. Last but certainly not least, I want to thank my family. They have been with me from the very beginning of this journey. They've seen me every up and down, and every time I thought I wanted to quit, they have offered endless amount of love and patience. They helped me to shape me into the educator and person I am today. With the endless amount of support I've received, I stand here today confident and optimistic about what the future holds. <laughs> Hannah Hart. I would like to start out by thanking my Lord and Savior for never giving up on me. To my parents and fiance, I am so thankful for your continuous support and unconditional love. I would like to thank Ms. Jordan for welcoming me into her classroom and showing me how to become a great teacher. To my friends and extended family, thank you for always encouraging me. Ultimately, I want to thank God for blessing me with these wonderful people and allowing me to be where I am today. I am so thankful for this journey, but even more thankful that it is over. Sarah Limke, it's been a long time coming and I have so many people to thank. The first person I need to thank is my husband, Alan. You have supported me emotionally, financially, in every way possible. Thank you to my parents for always pushing me to be the best I can be. Without the two of you, I wouldn't be where I am today. Thank you to my friends and family for your continued support throughout my journey. I have the best cheerleaders. Virginia Milton. Sorry. I have enjoyed every moment that I've had at Chipola College. 
I give all the glory to God for directing me on his path and being by my side every step of the way. Thank you to my mom and dad for continuously supporting me. I would have never made it through elementary school if y'all didn't fight demons to get me dressed in the mornings. Thank you to Jacob and his family for being there for me through it all. Thank you to my professors for always believing in me and pushing me to do my best. Thank you to my mentor teacher for just being you. I would not be able to complete this journey without you. Thank you to my grandparents for all the advice you have given me. Finally, thank you to my previous teachers who inspired me to grow up to be just like them. <laughs> Hannah Spears. I would like to thank my family for all of the support that they have provided me with through this long journey of becoming an educator. Becoming a teacher has been a dream of mine since I was a little girl, and I am so excited to finally make this a reality. Next, and most importantly, I would like to thank God for providing me with strength and guidance to be able to reach this point in my life. I would not have made it this far if it was not for my faith, and it is my faith that will carry me through my career as an educator. Lastly, I pray that my future students will understand how much I love and care for them so that I can make a positive impact on their lives. Michael Weeks. My mom recently told me that she did not think I would complete this program. I think I thought that half the time. This program has been the most challenging thing I have ever completed, but it has taught me how to be responsible for myself and how to have time management. Ms. Dogel, your classes caused me more stress than anything I have ever experienced, but I appreciate you seeing the change in me and acknowledging it. Dr. Clark, thank you for always being the happy, bright, and positive energy in the room. Dr. Johnson, thank you for always greeting me with a smile. Dr. McAllister, thank you for answering the thousands of questions I've had for you over these years. I hope the meals I brought you made up for it. Ms. Perkins, I cannot express how blessed I was to have you as my mentor teacher. I had the best time being in your classroom. To my classmates, I could have not done this without your support and laughs. To my family, thank you for supporting me and encouraging me through this experience. To Paxton, thank you for uplifting me, encouraging me, and being my rock. With that being said, I am very glad to be done. Y'all won't ever have another one like me. <laughs> Bree Willis, first and foremost, I wanna say with God, all things are possible. Throughout this journey, I've had the best support system. To my fiance, thank you for your continued support throughout this journey. To my precious baby girl, thank you for being my biggest motivator to get through this program. Mom and Dad, I could never say thank you enough for always supporting me and being my biggest fans. To the rest of my family, thank you for your support and kind words during this journey. I love each of you. What a journey this has been. I never thought I would see the light at the end of the tunnel, but here we are. To Dr. McAllister, each of my professors, and my mentor teacher, thank you for everything during this program. Each of you helped in bettering myself as a future educator. I am beyond thankful for this journey and cannot wait to see what the future holds. <laughs> Colin Strickland. Without these people, this could have never happened. I want to thank all of my instructors throughout my time at Chapala College. I want to thank my Jazz family, especially Mr. Suggs, Mr. Justice, Ms. Davis, and Ms. Yates. To my friends, Skylar Davis, Carly Allen, and Zoe Birch, thank you so much. Lastly, I need to give a special thanks to my mother and my brother, Wendy and Austin Strickland. Thank you to everyone on this list, and I deeply appreciate you. Dr. McAllister deserves a special shout out. You have given me an incredible amount of patience, respect, and care when I did not always deserve it. I am eternally grateful for all that you have done. <laughs> Skylar Davis. First, I'd like to thank my parents, Ron and Michelle, my wife, Leslie, and my girls, Kat and Ayla, for helping me throughout this long journey of finishing up my degree. I'd also like to thank the principals I've worked for, Rex Suggs and Xander Warren, 
that have allowed me to work and coach while also allowing me to navigate through my college responsibilities. I would also like to thank Mr. Justice, Ms. Yates, Ms. Wheatley, and Ms. Dees for showing me the ropes in the classroom. Katie Forrester, I would like to thank my family and friends for their unwavering support and continued push throughout the process of me going back to school. I would also like to thank the professors and Dr. McAllister for their guidance and help in making me a successful future educator. My dream of becoming a teacher is now a reality and I cannot wait to see what my future holds. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Yoritza Figueroa. First, I want to thank God for helping me get in this program. Without him, I would not have found a love and passion for teaching. I never thought I would be a teacher, but I am thankful for the plan that God has in store for me. Next, I want to thank my parents for being there to support me. Thank you to my mom for pushing me to start working as a substitute teacher. Without her, I would not have gotten to where I am now. Thank you to my brother, Andy, for allowing me to use his vehicle. Without him, I would not be able to finish my internship. Thank you to Mr. Zayas for being there to help and support. What started as an observation in his class before starting the program, to finish the program as his intern. You've been the best support any intern can have. Thank you to Hannah Wilkes for leading me to start this program. Being full-time with you as a substitute allowed me to have a passion to be a teacher. Thank you to everyone else who has helped me get to this point, and I hope to be an educator that can inspire the future generations. Let's give our graduates one more round of applause. <laughs> We are so proud to, gra to congratulate each one of you on um, this major accomplishment. Uh, we look forward to seeing all the wonderful things that you're going to be doing and hearing about all the impact that you've made on the, all of the students that you're going to come in contact with every day. Um, welcome to the beginning of a, an amazing career. We're very proud to call you colleagues. Before we conclude our ceremony today, I would like to invite Mr. Eddie Ellis to come forward to share a few closing remarks with us. Mr. Ellis um, has been in the classroom for many years and has a lot of experience in education, also as an administrator, and most recently, he has served as the mentor for our uh, interns as their internship supervisors. So, Mr. Ellis? You know, two of the most difficult places to be placed is right before dinner to speak and right at the end. <laughs> Those are the two most difficult places to be placed. However, to the parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, all of you who've had a hand in pouring into the lives of these young people that are sitting in front of us who are graduating in the field of education, uh, we say thank you because without you, uh, without your guidance, they could not be who they are today. To the graduates, welcome to the real world. <laughs> welcome to the world of unruly students. Welcome to the role of un to the uh, area of unreal parent conferences. Welcome to the role of bus duty, car riding duty, weekends of lesson plans, just a whole plethora of things. But guess what? It's worth it, and that's what it's all about. I hear people all the time say that they chose a career. Um, they chose to do this, they chose to do that. Uh, to me, teaching, you don't choose it. It's a calling. It's something that was placed in your heart to do because you wanted to make a difference 
in the lives of young people. And that's what it's all about. On your worst day, always, always remember, it's always about the children. It's always about the students. Even when you don't feel well, you have to give them your best because it's about them. Even that day that you got up and went to work and you didn't want to go, it's all about them. You are in a position to shape the lives of young people, which in turn will shake the world as we live in it today. One of the most difficult things about teaching is that you're simply planting a seed in whatever grade that you're in. And you won't see that seed grow until it matures. They don't plant corn today and it stalks up tomorrow. But when the students come back to you years later and say thank you, then you will know that you have done the right thing and your calling is what you're supposed to do, and that's teach. So I leave you with this briefly, real simple, that I learned back in the first grade. Real simple. Bite off more than you can chew and chew it. Plan more than you can do and do it. Hit your wagon to a star and keep your seat, and there you are. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ellis, and thank you to all of you that have joined us today for this wonderful celebration. We are so, again, proud. I know I've said it many times, we're very proud of our graduates, and we're proud of what they're going to accomplish. This concludes our ceremony. Um, I hope that you guys have some wonderful things planned for the rest of your afternoon to continue the celebration. Thank you for coming.